Uh, I'm Omar Holman from Black Nerd Problems. I write about stuff and do videos about stuff. I'm Tiffy Starchild, <laughs> but I, yeah, I'm just a nerd that says things online and sometimes I defend villains. I'm Ashley of X of Words. And I'm Carla Dan. Hey everybody, welcome to the big crossover we are calling Referential 97. So go listen to Khalid's podcast and this is also it's Words 97. We have great nerd guests talking to us about X-Men 97, the nostalgia cartoon that we are loving slash eating slash crying about slash obsessed with slash don't want to be obsessed with. We're going to be talking about X-Men 97 episode two. Quick summary. Actually, Tiffy, do you want to give the summary? Me give the summary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't prepared. Okay, so this is what happens. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I think, was it the end of last episode where they show up and take Magneto away to the to the core and that's where he goes. So this is basically going to be the trial where he's speaking on behalf of like the crimes that he committed in the past, even though he was really dope and like rescued the children and all the people from the Ferris wheel that was like spinning and things. He's trying to show good faith and basically be like, even though my ideals don't necessarily align with Charles Xavier's as a show of good faith, I am going to just like play along and just cooperate and things like that. He also went down into the sewers with the Morlocks and he got them taken to Genosha. He basically forced it. It's implied that he used his powers and then Charles's money to get them out of the sewers and to someplace safe. And he's basically telling Scott and Jane, like, you should have been ever able to figure this out. Like, why is this just now happening? And you've had all this money all this time that you could have been using to, you know, help people. Eat the rich. So that was that. At the trial, the Friends of Humanity start to break in and they are after not only Magneto, but also the, who are the, who's that tribunal? UN tribunal? The U, oh, <laughs> they're, after, they're after the UN because they're like, not only are we after the mutant, but just the fact that you are giving this mutant a fair trial, you guys are blood traitors, you're race traitors basically, and we're going to come after you too. And Magneto uses that to further his point, like, oh, even when you do the right thing, you're being attacked. I wonder what that feels like. So. Mm. So they are attacking where the UN is meeting some of the X-Men team because they're all there. Do they ever wear like business casual? Because they showed up for a fight, which I think maybe <laughs> was kind of wild. Like they didn't show up in their suits or anything to court. But they go, part of them go to handle like the friends of humanity that are breaking in and to handle the executioner that came with them. And he has like special weaponry. So he's going to be harder to kill. And it's mm -hmm. Storm and Magneto on the inside. And Storm is just like, I need you to go get men over on that side. Undo Magneto right now because he has on the collar that suppresses his mutant abilities. And the guy is like, I don't think. And she's like, do not think. Just just listen and you'll survive. I love how she told that man to shut the fuck up. It was a very, very <laughs> great moment. But then when the executioner comes in, he's trying to shoot Magneto with his gun. And for whatever reason, Storm is compelled to save this white man. So she takes the shot instead. So I am confusion. And ends up like without her powers flailing on the ground. America explain. And like, oh my, like, I know you just got shot, but please stand up. Cause she just kept like flopping on the ground. And I can't help but feel away after that beautiful, very powerful scene that they gave her in the previous episode. Why they got her on a salmon that like a bear swatted out of a river. And it was very strange. And Magneto, who's been like the only real motherfucker to really like respect Storm is like, oh, hell nah, not my girl. And so he like, takes everyone basically up into space which I thought was a little bit extreme but he had a point to make and he's like I could kill you I could kill you but again I'm trying to be a better person I'm going to show you the mercy that you refuse to show us and I'm going to let you live he basically gives a whole big old long speech about that and in the end he takes them back down they decide to absolve him of all of his crime pardon him and all the things like that and then um, Storm has a blood test done to 
figure out like what's going on. It turns out that the loss of her powers is permanent. So Jean is like, we'll stay with you, girl. And Storm's like, I don't want all that. So she leaves at, by the end of the episode. And Rogue and Magneto, because it's heavily hinted that they have something going on, um, because obviously Magneto can be touched by Rogue without it affecting him and just there's a lot of hinting at something going on there, which Gambit overhears. This is a heartbreak hotel. This is a... Which, I, I, I don't know, like, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that. I would just walk in the room and make it awkward for everybody. You're not about to have me out here looking stupid. But he just, like, <laughs> drops the card on the ground and, like, walks away all sad. And that was episode two. <laughs> but I don't really remember what happened. Oh, who showed up? Who showed up at the end? Someone else showed up at the very end. Oh, uh, oh yeah, another. Uh, there was a knock at the door, <laughs> and then it's Jean, and she like <laughs> steps inside, and they're like, "Oh my God, it's Jean!" Less. But then pregnant Jean is also right there, so there's two Jeans, and she immediately faints. X-Men. Amazing. Can you come on every episode and do that for us, please? Yeah. <laughs> sure. I can't lie, because when you went, when you went, but then I went. <gasps> I, I watched the episode, Tiffy. Like I was, I was there, and I still got us <laughs> it. I'm going, I'm going to have so much fun editing that. I just know it. Uh, okay. Now I would like to take a moment to um, reenact a scene of Storm oh, no. losing her powers. <clears throat> the moisture, the breeze. I can't feel it. What have you done to me? <laughs> okay. You. Now, now. <laughs> Now, bit okay. I hope you're ready to hear that again at the gates of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I'm okay oh, with that. Cool. Me and God will laugh mm -hmm. and laugh. Because <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're gonna play. <laughs> they're gonna play that shit to you. Someone's arm gonna come around the door and click that basement <laughs> button, and you going down. You going down. I'm gonna say as I fall down. I'm gonna say worth it. I will say yes. <laughs> 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 Worth every single moment. I regret nothing whatsoever. Fine. Now what? Now what? Well, let's talk about. Let's talk about episode two. Let's talk about episode two. What did we think? We've got to stick with this fucking bit. But I tell you what, if all of you lot start doing some some ridiculous, which year do I like bullshit over this? Ooh, she's bad. I, I don't want to hear nothing about no hopscotch, about no boomboxes. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing about it. All right. <laughs> shall we do the roll call? Thank you. <laughs> what was your rating of this episode out of 97? Okay. Out of 97, it's hard because I want to go to the future. I'm in 2020 with this ranking. I think this one I will go 96.5 only because of the, uh, I loved it. Only thing I didn't like as we talked about like the messaging and stuff like that. I still hate the press becoming the oppressor's narrative of like, oh, this could happen to, you know, what they think will happen or like when people in power or people not in power get power. And then that mm. whole like unity thing. But like, that's, that's the only thing where I'm like, Ugh. but aside from that, I, this, I was shocked. I was the turns. I was, I was surprised. I was, I was genuinely surprised. Mm -hmm. Tiffy? I would go with 95, a hot summer day. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Power 905. You said no years. <laughs> she rolled her eyes so hard that I knew something was coming. I knew something was coming. I saw the cogs turning. I was like, I was like, so it can't be years. Okay. <laughs> I think the issue for me was, I, and I know that they wanted to give us a very dramatic moment so that we could feel the weight of Storm losing her powers, <laughs> but she, she was really flopping on the ground. It was a lot. The breeze is gone. I, I, I wouldn't <laughs> let them see me flop on the ground like that, even if I did lose my powers. I would I would simply brush it off in the moment and, and be in pain in secret. I would hold that <laughs> pain inside. <laughs> <laughs> she looked like, she looked like a baby deer have. trying to walk. It was, it, she, she looked like fresh tilapia with that big fin on the top of it. I did start so screaming during that scene. I was like, it was embarrassing. Yeah. It was very embarrassing. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> girl, fight back. Like, you're not even trying. She, oh, she passed away? Oh. Oh. All right. So, so when you're my sister okay. in humidifier, Jesus. Uh, not a humidifier. <laughs> but it, that, that shit must have really hurt because you, did you see the scorch mark on the yes. front? Through the front. It didn't thing. go through. Like, <laughs> the fabric wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Can I? 
Uh, right. I I'll talk I'll talk about what I think about generally about the episode. I think this episode was again stolen almost completely by Magneto because mm. I've I I've realized that politically I am far more Magneto than anybody mm-hmm. else. Magneto gave me the best moment of the episode when they all jumped out of the uh they all jumped out of the helicopters yes. with the guns and their guns were already pointed on him. Yes. And he picked up and she was like, all of our guns have been made to account for your powers. And he picked up everybody's helicopter and and he boxed them in, in between helicopter blades while he hovered just six feet above everybody Mm -hmm. else. Remember, he never flies all the way. He just puts his head above your head. So you, so he gets to look down at you. And I find (laughs) that... I find that very. I thought that was the gayest moment. <laughs> it was the best uh. stun. It was the best stun. <laughs> and also the the fact that I never felt like he knows the bullshit of the system. He never. He even when he he get now he let those people fucking collar him, mm-hmm. and I was like, he did it with such a knowing level of skepticism mm-hmm. in this whole process that I felt very connected to Magneto. Now, when he said to me, Omar, when he said the whole oppressors becoming oppressed becoming the oppressors thing i actually thought that was and i know you said that from a black and brown perspective that kind of rang Mm -hmm. oddly with you but as a as as like one of the most popular titular jewish characters i actually felt i heard that more of as a call out now to to the palestinian genocide (laughs) i I saw that as a direct okay that was a stake in the ground yeah and um and that again, I was really, really. That was one of my, that was the str- one of the strongest parts of the episode for me because I was like, "Good." I, I felt like that was there was loads of ways that could have been milk toast. And that's, mm-hmm. I mean, come on, it's a Disney property, but I was like, "That's a pr- that's that's as, that's as hard a foot as you can get down in a Disney property." Yes. Um, and then I mean, we're making a lot of jokes about fucking Storm and the way she she was depowered. But I I understand that it's a part of her story beat. I understand that she comes back. I understand she's about to get very South London. I understand, yeah, it's South gonna London. be some listen, some people about <laughs> yeah, to get <laughs> she some people about to be yeah. leaking. Croydon storm, Croydon, Croydon storm, the storm. Croydon storm. <laughs> storm. <laughs> <laughs> the Americans in this chat are just looking at us with dead eyes. They're like, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but she's, I understand. I get it. Yes. But also, I feel like her jumping to sacrifice herself in front of yes. a white, for a white man was very mammy-ish. I also feel, I also, they, they were, ex- remember, Storm wasn't part of, they, everyone was saying they hated that motherfucker. There was a whole <laughs> meeting. There was a whole meeting where we go, we expressly hate this motherfucker. And then Storm went, Oh no! The bit that I didn't like about it, and the bit that I felt was explicitly kind of white about it here, was that everybody managed to silver line the depowering of the black. Why mm-hmm. is it that black suffering is never enough to justify violence? Why is it black suffering is mm-hmm. never the step mm-hmm. too far? When the black woman is on the floor screaming and she's been depowered, and something she's something central to her was ripped out in that moment, then everybody found their they're gentle compassion yes. Every, yes then it's then it's the silver lining of it oh well let's high road let's be better than this but, but magneto was ripping magneto is standing on trial for how many times he was killing motherfuckers yes. but it's today it's the black yep. woman's depowering that mm. you can find your kumbaya over and this and even that because I, I, I was like fine but it's the way that the narrative then teed up it didn't even let storm be the tragedy of the end part of the episode because mm-hmm. what they kept doing was shooting us over to g and it was like no 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 but the emotional thrust of this is that a white woman is in peril actually mm-hmm. i know storm just got depowered but let's keep on cutting to gene having the baby and oh and screaming and and i was like so you won't even rest on the tragedy of storm she mm-hmm. had to have that mm-hmm. gratuitous depower a moment and that's it and that's that i felt like it fell into the trap of black suffering I, I call it i call it green booking black suffering being used mm. to teach everybody how bad something is and i was like i wanted to see if a black woman and suffers i want mm-hmm. to see i want to see retribution actually yeah 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 that's all like, oh my god he's gonna kill him now okay i'm like oh oh, oh we're yeah i was like i was like well everyone's dead as soon as, soon as she got shot i went well i closed my hands i said i hope you don't have no feelings bitch because it's i honestly thought he was going to like yo you see like what i thought he was going to kill executioner in space and then the jury's going to be like yeah yeah you like the, the jury we're, we're still gonna pardon him like yeah like it yeah 
Yeah, we, we get, but like, oh, he, he lets them go. Then, of course, oh, yeah, that's part. And oh, yeah, we'll let, we'll help Genosha out now and everything yeah, like that. Because yeah. your life, because it wasn't you. Mm. You get to show how evolved you are because you didn't take the black woman's dehumanization too badly. You know, you could just, that was the thing that you, look, look at how human we are. You can abuse her and we can look over it. I wanted the, I wanted the executioner to die at least. What you yes. want to be? I thought he was gonna squish him. I was ready for him to be squished. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm like, I'm like, I need, like, I can't even imagine. Like, he tried. Like, hey, hey, y'all saw I tried. You, you tried. Yeah, he tried. He tried. We're all, we're all in agreement. So he motherfucker tried. I do because that is Storm's story arc, right? It what is. other way to? I think the aftermath of the thing is the worst thing because like, oh, this thing happens to her. We know this has happened to her because of the story. The only thing I can think of, like, if. Even if it's like a gust of wind or something, or if she was like, she her, her jumping in the shot. It, it reminded mm. me of um fucking Monica in Rambeau jumping from those kids, not knowing she had powers. The only other way I could have seen this going down is if uh if Bishop is the one that jumped in front of it because oh I can channel anything if it's a laser like I can or I can take the kinetic energy from uh from a bullet like that makes sense for him to jump in front of. But I don't want that. I'm like, I don't want that to happen. But I'm just like the jumping in front of like the fact that. The friends of humanity. If if you're a friend of humanity, actually, Magneto is the mutant that you love because Magneto yeah, does right. fucked up shit that's on your yeah. side, right? Yeah. So when you run in, if if I was writing it, I would have had the friends of humanity go into the UN, realize that actually the big hitter that was calling all the shots was Storm, and if mm. I really wanted to make a dent in the mutant cause, it's not kill the the mutant that everybody fucking hates that helps me out. It's taking kill out the shining loves. light one because I think yes. then that mirrors. Because what it does is, if we if you're talking about real bigotry, bigotry mm. is pointed like that. Yes. Bigotry does do that. And actually, black women yes. are a huge target of bigotry. And for a black woman to throw herself into the path of a bullet that was meant for a white man, I think undercuts the fact that black women do face very targeted, intentional bigotry themselves. So I would have yes. had I would have had them come in, assess who the big mutant in the room was, and go, oh, well, considering Magneto's fucking... He's, he's already got a power inhibitor. Why do I need to shoot him with the shit? With this? We can literally do this. And they've like, we've got one shot. Well, yeah, maybe it's Storm who's got all of mm -hmm. her power. Like, and it's I know her. Yeah. yeah, and it's telling the UN what to do. And then I would have given that event the mm. end of the episode. That yeah. would have been the that would have been the titular end of the episode. Storm has been depowered, and this is a tragedy that we yes. dedicate the end of the episode to. Rather than she gets kind of because she just seems incidental. Mm. They went there to yeah. shoot Magneto, but then she jumped in the way. And then we're focusing on Jean, but then she also got depowered. So th one of the most tragic events of, mm. of, of Storm's life is spliced in between two other quote unquote more important or a a string stories. And I thought that was. Yeah. Fun. I agree with like parts of what you say, but then there's other things I want to push back on. It's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my rating for the episode, I guess, is like I would give it like an 81. The main reason I would do that is because it made me feel something. And like that like goes a long way for me. I was like, oh, I felt like something empathy and like um, interested in Storm's story. I agree with you in terms of like, I really don't like how it trailed off and ended. And also I think just the actual seeds of that story itself being problematic and the idea of like the martyrdom of of black yes. women specifically like there is that um and that's like a very big thing and i agree with all the points that you made about it i think that i want to give a bit of credence to one specific choice which is having her jump in front of magneto because he is a white man correct like he said he's also a holocaust survivor and i think that's like so deeply ingrained uh in his character and he mentions it soon after and i think that like i'm not saying that that invalidates it i think that's all still there that's all very correct i think that that's a very awkward choice to make but i think there's also perspective where like oh there's something powerful about seeing her move instinctively to defend someone who quickly calls back on like the horrors of like the holocaust that he personally experienced and like that tying into well that tying into a point that i wouldn't have wanted him to make which is that i believe in coexistence now and this is what i'm going to pursue i don't think yeah. that should have been the end point yeah. i think yeah. what you said was completely correct i think that it should have mm. ended with him um taking everybody else down because i think that would have been so satisfying to have a moment of um just rage at what happened to her 
I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm trying to say like having her emotions be given, like you said, exactly yeah, the weight of the story instead of like it just occupying five minutes. There's also, I think, another thing that is weighing for me, which is like, I really like like those life death issues, which is which is not what this story is, but what's coming up to. I like the second life death issue best, but I'm like apprehensive whether they're going to do it like that because if they're adapting, which is something I said I liked, are they going to change it significantly because Forge isn't here in the room? And I think that is go- might change the meanings and I don't know how the final picture of it look yeah i think i'm just i'm uncomfortable with it but also <laughs> i have fighting impulses because also i like i laughed a lot watching storm flop around the breeze is gone but then i was angry <laughs> i was like why did that yeah. happen yeah <laughs> so it was like a lot of mixed things for me but yeah I, ultimately mm-hmm. i think i didn't like that they chose to end this part of her story at the moment with her like hopping on 16 carriages and like <laughs> riding away like, that was cute for me <laughs> <laughs> Sixteen. Like you're like Greyhound right now. The fuck you. Okay. If if any, I I I, I genuinely didn't find the moment funny. If anything was actually mm. funny, it was the quickness with which she left that house. Oh that yes. Was the oh, only yeah. thing that was funny. <laughs> she turned that card straight in. There was a letter on that bed before anybody had even taken their uniforms off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she looked at that, <laughs> <laughs> that scorch mark. She said, "They got me fucked all the way up." <laughs> she put that straight up. <laughs> <laughs> she was gone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna type this shit up too, so they know I mean this shit. <laughs> Tiffy, what did you think? Yeah. Oh, um, to me, I feel like I, I agree with Ashley in that it, it's a moment that's lost mm-hmm. because Black women are so often targeted by bigoted groups. Yeah, so I feel like that is a lost moment. And just this idea, this manification of like this need for Black women to save people. Um, it did remind me a lot of Man- Monica Rambeau in WandaVision, where she jumped in front of Wanda's kid. She, and, and at the time, she had no idea that she had her powers, so she was ready to sacrifice, sacrifice herself for him. And it's interesting because when you bring things like this up, people accuse you of like intentionally looking for it or like reading too deeply into Mm. things or making an issue when there is none, but clearly it's a pattern. So I guess for me, sometimes I just want to turn off that part of the brain that analyzes and picks out these patterns and looks at the, the production staff and the creative staff of projects like this and wondering what their politics and their views are on things and how it's reflected Mm. in the work and I think it's why it's important to have certain people in the room when we're having these conversations. x Men stories are so closely tied with marginalized people and their experiences. And I just wish that we had more representation in those rooms to avoid things like this. How many Black women were present mm. when it came to incorporating Storm into these storylines? And why has this lesson still not been learned? Like the comic books are right there. And there's a lot that we can learn from the things that the comic books do right and also what they do wrong and how they mismanage wow. and kind of fumble mm. these characters so many times it boils down to not having the right people in this in the room telling these stories it's i like it's one of those things where i find this so so enjoyable but then moments like this are just like a, oh yeah mm. Mm. this could have been handled well this this could have yeah. been done better it's not the worst thing in the world it doesn't ruin mm. the show for me but it is just one of those realities it's a it's a black nerd problem it's a black woman nerd problem like these are the type of things that we have to we're expected to just consume this media without picking up these patterns or without noticing when something problematic like this repeats but you don't we don't get that luxury yeah. mm-hmm. i i really love what you said there because i think that's that's such a tension where you there's a part of you that does see mm-hmm. all these things and it's 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 kind of like it's kind of like watching the sausage show as a pig. Mm. It's fun, but sometimes you realize you're the meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're, you're vibing. Oh, this is great. Wait, that's made out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, how do, I, how do I split those two parts of my brain? How do I enjoy mm. this as a standalone bit of media while also seeing that once again, everybody has rallied around black suffering. You see this everywhere. There's always black suffering can never just be a tragedy. Mm. There always has to be some silver lining in it, some way you can learn through it or some way it makes you better. It's seen as a tool for self-improvement rather than a tragedy in and of itself. And I saw that wholesale in the end of that episode. Did I love loads of other things about it? Of course. Of course I did. I thought I thought the episode was really fucking cool. I just really would have loved that if you have to bring a black woman low, that you actually let that mm-hmm. be sad. And mm-hmm. I, I thought it was like a shrewd, shrewd moment that it was mm. white. It's white femininity that they cycle that. Mm. 
They wanted you, it was like, mm-hmm. oh, no, 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 it's the white woman who's really going through something we should be empathizing well, even, with Well, even even the conversation between Jean and Storm, when she mentions like, oh, I don't want my, how do I tell my, my son? How do I tell my child? He's a mutant. How do I tell him he's different? That the world will remind him of it every day. That he must always be careful, always be on guard or else. You wish him to be born human. I have wondered what it would be like to be human. It is a tempting daydream. But then I remember how my mutant gifts brought me to this mansion, to this family, to a sister. Thank you. Sir. That they're different. She's yeah. asking a dark skinned black woman living in America that question. And was that moment not did no one point that out? Like there was no, there was nothing it, how do you get that close to touching on something that important and this and then like and it's focused mm. on Jean's suffering and Jean's struggle in Storm has given up so much rich mm. history to be here with you in yep. this fuck ass house. <laughs> and like it's just how do I tell my child that, that you know they might be different? Oh well, um I don't know. I stepped down as a goddess two <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm here with you and that one with the big glasses keeps trying to put me on a, a, a washing up roster. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not yeah, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but seriously, I, I hope that her depowering because she said a lot of things that I think just erased a lot of Storm's character mm. generally. When she was like, Oh, it brought me here to this family and that I I, I feel least connected to Storm when they venerate the most important parts of her or the parts that she values the most as her association with the white X-Men. When yeah. Storm, when they have Storm speak about herself like she's only special or the best parts of her life were when she sat in stay away camp with, with you lot. And mm-hmm. I, she was like, it brought me to this sister. <laughs> and I was like, God, stand yeah. up. Sound like a mother. And I think it's like you mentioned before, even with having her start this series in the Mohawk, they've taken away that moment of growth for her or a moment that we can see in her arc. If they were going to give her the Mohawk, it should have followed the moment where she's depowered. She has to relearn and reconnect with herself. Mm -hmm. Part of that is a hair journey. No, just give her the Mohawk because it's a look to give her. So she doesn't even have that moment in this series. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's like, it's really frustrating the fact that the, the comic story, this happened because someone was attacking mm-hmm. a white woman and now it's kind of like this this animated story now we're gonna have like this happen and then let's just like look at look at the white woman who's suffering you know uh-huh. I, the thing that I, I also find really frustrating about like what happened is that no one they weren't aiming for storm you know it's like it's, it's, it feels incidental and like it kickstarted mm-hmm. i feel like i think what ash said i think earlier about like i just wish there was more intention like if this was like a yes. plot against specifically storm there would have been something that felt a lot more satisfying yeah. About it. but yeah they just kind of left themselves when this is happening and then like literally two minutes later you have magneto choosing not to kill the fascists it, it's issues you know <laughs> like it's yeah. like there's something iffy about the politics here and it feels like you're telling me that you're selling me a pipe mm. dream just like mm. Xavier is, and i don't we don't believe in that anymore we know better i hope moving forward that because we know now that she's depowered and mm-hmm. <laughs> not, she's she's 16 carriages away 16 carriages <laughs> child she comes back on a horse because you imagine she came back on a horse with the same haircut as the horse yeah. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> this <is> Westchester. <laughs> and hold him <laughs> oh no no with the big x this yes. ain't Texas. <laughs> Saying hold, um, so um, no, I uh, we know that she's probably going to get more airtime because there's nothing that, and I'm going to be frank, there's nothing that white male nerds love more than a depowered storm mm-hmm. in in the doo doo shoots, uh, <laughs> fighting fighting with them people with the knives in 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 the pipes. They love that. Where do we like mm-hmm. that black woman in the pipes? <laughs> No powers. Pipe. She cannot be away for six episodes. I'm not watching this show. Listen, my my dad once said something to me that when it comes to media representation, a lot of time black people are niggas or win nothing. And it's mm. it is never lost on me that a lot of people's favorite iteration of Storm is when they she has a knife in her hand. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, does that feel familiar to you? Anyway, but uh, apart from that, putting that aside. And now for me to flip and say the complete opposite, this is a show that is very action driven. And I feel yeah. like they gave us a big storm feat 
but I hope they double down on making sure that when they show Storm yes. being powerful and leading that team and capable physically, I want Storm to get exactly the same level of, of investment Cyclops got in his hand to hand. Yes. I yes. want her to be fighting Make, with like yeah. as much intricacy as they drew fucking Wolverine with like as much dedication to like she will have a style. She yes. will like, yeah, they need to like go in right. and gonna I don't want to see her standing at the front pointing and having other people doing the business. Get, make yeah. her the star of the show. If you if you robbed her of being the focus in her depowering, let her be the, fa- the focus as she is e- empowered. No, I completely agree with you. I will say, though, it is really interesting how Storm gets depowered. She does all this, and she still is not the loser of the episode. X-Men! That will remain Jean Grey. <laughs> <laughs> There's two of you? Why are there two losers? What the fuck is this? So, okay, this brings in something. I have a theory. So I don't no, know if whether no. you all agree with it. But like Jean in the X-Men is not is Maddie, right? Like she's the clone, not the, the one, one that, that came in. I think the, the one that came one. in is the real one. Yeah. I think the one that came is a real one. Point. Why does she have blue eyes in this? That feels uh, incorrect to me that Jean has blue eyes. It should be green. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, that I'm, no I'm Jean like, oh. has green eyes. Yeah, but in the, uh, in the she show, does. she has blue eyes. And I was like, oh, I wonder whether that was a hint. Oh, oh shit. I'm like, Cyclops, you don't know the color of your wife's eyes? What the fuck is this, man? <laughs> everything, everything is red to Cyclops. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, he hasn't noticed because everything is red to him. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> he, said, he said, my baby's pink. <laughs> Storm is just dark pink. <laughs> and he's like, Storm is a what woman? Like, he just has no concept. Of- yeah. I'm not just red? Hold on, wait, what? <laughs> Did he name the book X-Men Red? <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Who is your loser of the episode? Okay, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Loser of the episode is briefly, just briefly, Scott. Yeah. Because when the executioner came in, Woo! that six piece that the executioner Woo! gave Scott was dirty. nasty work. That was brutal. I was, I, I went, ooh, ooh, ooh. I, I didn't even, I even thought this is embarrassing. <laughs> Yes! Yeah, it was! Because it, I got secondhand embarrassment from that. It is so bad, I want to give you a zero. But that's not possible. So I give you a one. And he was punching him with the Mega Man hand. He went, <laughs> he went boom, boom, boom. And Scott, just, uh, the blood came off and his, his, his shit was cracked. Crack. I said, baby, it's bench time. <laughs> <laughs> baby go sit down next to store over there go sit down next to store yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess what, you, you need you need like an orange slice <laughs> <laughs> Give me a wet, uh, just a wet, a wet towel or you know what's funny like was, oh yeah is that is that your king like i love that because nah your your fave needs to get their ass beat because if you win all the time what's fun about that and this is a team sport there are gonna be days where i I'm fucking, he took off my visor. I'm trying, I'm swinging at nothing. There will be, anybody can get got. We yeah. have these amazing powers, but a bullet can still hurt us. A punch, of course, it will still hurt. So I, I love that, like, yo, look how powerful you are. But yeah, you can still get these hands. Anybody yeah. can still get got one way or another. And like, you're going to be yeah. all powerful, but like, you still have a weakness. And, I, cause, yeah, the, and who, the heroes who need expected to be defeatable. Morph? They need to be defeatable, yeah. And who expected Morph to come in? Mm. Like yeah. working, where'd the swords come from, though? But oh, but I don't care because you're working. <laughs> the thing is, is uh, you've made a really good point because the the defeat of mutants was kind of a running theme throughout the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You got Magna Magneto who has to be accountable. You got Cyclops who gets pieced up brutally. Yeah. You get Storm who gets depowered. Wolverine who's taken out of the fight because he has to look after Gene. You've got Gene who's in labor, and then you've got the other Gene who collapses through the door. Everybody was down bad. Yeah, I also have a comment here where I said Magneto sometimes speaks like a conscious rapper. Um, anyway, <laughs> back back. <laughs> T- <laughs> Tiffy, what was your loser of the episode? Um, my loser was Storm for all the reasons that we have discussed mm. at length, and but mainly her flopping on the ground like that, like like she was. It was a freshly <laughs> waxed floor, and her boots had no traction. Like it was so much. I'm surprised no one said Gambit yet. Because cause when I thought Gambit was in the other episode, but the storm thing outweighs that. Uh-huh. Like, no. I'm like, that's just mess. Uh, what do we think of that scene, though? I'm really excited that they're, like, 
doing something with Gambit and Rogue because I just like, I, like they're fine. They're not my favorites. I find there's an intense fandom that I like that they're yeah. getting negative. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, yeah, I like that there's tension. I always, I always found the idea of Magneto and Rogue to be interesting. Do we know why when he touched her hand, nothing happened? There was like, they put their hands together and there was a little spark behind between yeah, that's, their hands. Yeah, that's the thing. Like his, he has like an electricity barrier, I think, so he's able to touch her. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that completely. I thought it was clever because the things that we see between Gene, Scott, and Logan, like that's just kind of like, it's old oh, hat at this point. Like, I'm never going to get tired of it. But like, I don't know, we kind of go into X-Men expecting that. That's been the running joke forever. So I thought that that was very clever of them to like, yeah, ooh, surprise, yes. we have a different love triangle. It's Magneto, Rogan, Gambit, which yep. to me is, first of all, much sexier. I'm sorry. But like, just, it, it, I think everybody was kind of surprised. They're like, oh, okay, we have a different type of mess, so. Gayest moment in the episode. X-Men. Tiffy reminded me that just before they dropped the reveal of the Magneto Rogue thing, mm-hmm. Rogue was really talking in very evocative language about the the relationship between Magneto and Charles. Yep. Mm-hmm. She was like, oh, so you made that helmet so he wouldn't feel how much you loved him and mm-hmm. knew you wouldn't do it. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> everybody's... This, this, it was the bisexual Olympics. Because... Everybody gay. <laughs> Because <laughs> Gambit, Gambit is out there in a crop top chasing after Rogue, who's chasing after Magneto, who's chasing after Charles, Charles. who is chasing after God knows whatever headpiece in space. It, it, it was good. It was good. Mm. I think this is where we saw the picture of them mm. together too, right? Where they're like, yeah. He said he loved him. Yeah. Like, finally. He's, Magneto said he loved Charles. Confirmed. Canon. Yeah. <laughs> Bring him down from Lulandra and then let's get this gay art going. Come on. Yeah, come get your mans. Truly. I did want to ask, actually, how far do you think this adaptation is going to like play with the Marvel Universe? What really pinged at me was uh, during the insurrection at the UN, the way that they kept saying no more mutants. And I was like, oh, is Wanda going to... I think we're going to have to... like it's Because that was one of the fun parts of um, of the original, right? Like, oh, shit, this person's here this week. Like, when Bobby came back and like, oh, and his frustrations of like, you know, it was just like when they were younger again. So like, I would like to see like, okay, well, what's... We got to see a cameo of uh, Warren through Morph. So it, ca- it can't just be Morph morphing into mm. the, the cameo appearances. It's got to be other folks coming in. Uh, so I, I am excited for that. And we, how we saw them in the background as well, like on like the newspaper in the, mm-hmm. in the very front one. Um, Emma Frost running in the... In the, in the, in the yeah. So like they, it, has to, it has to be. Yeah. It has to be. Yes. And poor I, Mero's missing. Good. Stay lost. Um, oh, anyway. <laughs> what, do you, what do you have against her? I have nothing for her. Oh, moving on. Uh- <laughs> I'll take the photo for me. So it's gotta be magnet with the. I just I love that photo of them together. Okay. Now, what is the blackest moment of the show? X Men. I think I think asset storm leaving. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna wash this fucking shit. Fuck this. I'm gone. And she's like, I don't have to do this anymore. Yeah, she said yesterday we were five mutants. Today. We are not. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are four. I did yeah. in her five minute notice and was like, I'm on my way now. That's how I left my left stop. I loved it. That's the strongest energy. Leave, no notice. Cope. Yep. Yeah. She said it, it was the X gene that had me Cope. putting up with you. Yes. <laughs> yes. You keep wanting to touch my shit. You've been wearing my knickers. <laughs> You've been wearing my cape. I know you have. Yeah. I can sense the energy of Kitty Pride coming in, and I'm not going to be Ex- here for that one. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm. What do you mean? If I was depowered and everyone was going, oh, well, at least our sworn enemy was pardoned by the UN, I would pack my shit too. <laughs> 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 Did he ever say thank you to her? Mm. I don't think so. He He left her on the ground. Didn't even put his hand out to pick her up off the floor. Mm -mm. Why did no one help her? Actually, that was the blackest moment of the episode. Storm fell, (laughs) was suffering on the ground, and no one came to her. Like when Michelle fell at that Destiny's Child concert, and Kelly just looked at her and kept on walking. Yeah. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Okay. (laughs) They said, poor Aurora. And I'm I'm not okay with it. They used it to their own ends. It wasn't just that they left her. It was that Magneto looked and then went to shame other white people so he could get off a charge. That's what happened. <laughs> yes. He took them up into the sky. What? 
just just unfortunate. I don't like it. X Men. So we've watched the first two episodes. We've watched the premiere. What do we think about the future of the show? Are we excited? What are we hoping for? I would say I am excited because I, I I catch myself like yelling out dirt while I'm watching the show, and it's been so long to like. Mm -hmm. see a show like not just like nostalgia like oh like all these things happen i'm like oh wow like like watching the show makes me vocal and like and i saw one of the folks on 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 it were like yeah everything is going to end like a cliffhanger just like the original so you have to come back and i'm like hey old formula but like it's 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 working for me it brings me back to see like what is going to happen next week who's going to show up this week where is this person at where's where's they're going to be at so like yeah i i it's i i'm intrigued i'm entirely intrigued Hmm. how about you tiffy I am very excited, um, and I, I, I love the bit that you just said about it ending on a cliffhanger because I feel very much that energy. I've seen episode three, and but it's the same feeling of, like, I'm very upset that, like, I have to watch these first episodes again. I'm not upset because they're good episodes to watch, mm. but I'm like, I want to know what happens mm. next in the story. It's mm. like, I, I want to know what happens next. So mm-hmm. I feel like I'm excited, but also given the changes that happened, within the creative team of it we know that they had season two already lined up and they were working on Mm. season three i hope i feel like that there are so many talented people that know the Mm -hmm. x-men i don't think that losing a particular member of the staff can make or break a project necessarily i just hope they that they tap into the right people that can take what is a very good series so far and i hope one person being gone doesn't take this whole thing down so Mm -hmm. Ash, can I ask Tiffy a quick question? Mm. Episode three. Mm-hmm. What Ooh. would you rate that? Don't don't spoil it for us. But I will not it. spoil. Um, if we just do a regular ass one to ten rating, yeah, I would yeah, yeah. I would please, rate please, it. Please. I would rate it a, a ten. Ooh, that was. Oh. I would rate it a ten, and I I might not remember all the details of the episode, and so there might be some just nuanced things that I've missed. But as far as Mm -hmm. feeling excitement, as far as seeing how far they can push things like animation, they do, I feel like some people might find it rushed, but I like your approach of coming in, letting go of the comic Mm. books. You're going to know where things maybe are going before they happen, but you might not like how they get there. So like, and, and so it requires turning that bit off. And it was very interesting being in a theater full of people watching it because so many of us were sharing that experience. So hearing the gasps and the, like the, just the reactions to things that were happening. Meanwhile, I feel like, again, they really pushed things with animation. Cause we were like, what is this? Ah! Like we were, <laughs> we were freaking out. So like episode three was a very wild, fun ride. So. Ooh. Oh, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm super excited. I, you know what, I might have my misgivings and whatever about certain executional points, but the fact is I'm here talking about Mm -hmm. it. And I think we now have animation that is good enough to Mm -hmm. do a show like this justice. Uh, The action beats are gagging me, but like they've never done before. Even when you go back to the old stuff, like, you know, when Storm lifted up that half a building and dropped it on top of Juggernaut's head, like that was great. But we've seen things that are so, so iconic already that I'm looking forward to that. And I think I like I yes. like the pace. I like the fact that we are talking to Sunspot mm-hmm. already. Yeah. Because that's the next generation of mutants. I like the fact that we've already seen like snippets of dust. Because I like it shows that they're pushing quite far, and we're not going to linger in this early this yes. early school mm-hmm. landscape for too long. So I hope down the road we are at new mutants spinoffs give us spinoffs yeah the mm-hmm. hellions do you know what i mean because we've already started to got those seeds of like these times that i think mm. are a little bit more contemporary and that i think that's what i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to this not just being nostalgia bait yeah. but actually a bridge from the people who loved old x-men and introducing them to like the new waves of x-men and hopefully giving them a bit of a platform as well. That, yeah. And I think for my and I agree with every single thing that everybody said. My only thing is that I would like them to fast track Emma Frost into the series, but that's just like... Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> 
Thank you. Let's go. Thank you. I'm in. Um, yeah. I'm a. You know. I'm a card carrying whitey. So we're all. You call her white queen. I you call her white queen. He does this every motherfucking time. <laughs> He's decided that Emma Frost stands. Oh, I remember that tweet. I remember that tweet. I'm gonna respectfully rebuke that energy out of my personal life. It's okay. It's I okay. love that for you, <laughs> me personally. You'll still get the invite. It's okay. Uh, you don't have to come. You'll get the invite. I, yeah, 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 yeah. And I appreciate that you because you give me the option exactly. to respectfully. That's res uh, that's respectful. I'm just happy you have not blocked me. Uh, that, that's it. <laughs> Get the invite. You don't have to, have to go block me. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so so much. This episode was hosted by Ash Lane of The Immortal X of Words. You can find that everywhere you get your podcasts. And it was hosted and produced by Khalid Nas of Referential. You can also find that podcast everywhere you get your podcasts. Make sure you follow Omar at Omar Holman and Tiffy at Tiffy Starchild. You can find Ash at Van the First and me at Also Perf everywhere. But you got to make sure to follow both podcasts because we'll be alternating. So episode three is going to show up on my feed next week. And then episode four is going to show up on the Immortal X of Words feed the week after. And so on until episode 10, the finale, where we will go back to sharing. So make sure you stay up to date. And give us five stars and a nice rating. Make us want to come back. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. The breeze is gone.